we set up these little lunch and learn so that we could kind of hit you with some quick tips to help you be successful. So again, thank you for joining us today. I'll be your host. My name is Evan Sanchez. I'm the CEO of Springboard Consulting and the author of Sell Like a Champ, as well as Cracking the Rich Code. We also have another book in production called Elevate Your Business. Uh, it's basically just an overview of how we've been helping companies springboard their business by elevating their thinking so that they can elevate their business. Today is a, another way of doing that. You know, we all deal with stress. We all deal with uncontrollable stress. And we all need tools to remind us if we're in burnout or if we are in overwhelm or if we are in what I like to call rust out too. So there's lots of different stages of things that stress can cause in us that hold us back from reaching our highest levels of performance, both as leaders and sales folks, anyone who has to influence so that they can grow their business or build a stronger team or fulfill their purpose. So there's a lot of good reasons as to why you'd like to learn how to beat burnout and be the best that you can be. So that's what we are going to be talking about today. So today's webinar, Tuesday 6, 2023, why are we here? We're here because burnout affects everyone. Here's the information from Gallup. Gallup says that 20% of the average engagement among employees worldwide, that's it. Only 20% of our employees, those of us that go to work, even as leaders, even as owners, even as solopreneurs, typically on average, only 20% of folks walking around in a room of 100, only 20 of those folks will actually be engaged. Engaged means focus. Engaged means having what we like to call discretionary energy, or knowing how to manage the energy. 49%, that's the number of average engagement among Gallup clients. So what Gallup's saying is, hey, if we work on our strengths, we can actually help improve that. And that's true, because as we move towards working on strengths, we're also moving into what I like to address as the growth mindset within a culture. The other thing to learn about engagement is that 73% is the average engagement among Gallup's best practice clients. So what are we saying here? We're saying that burnout can be beat and it can be beat in a lot of different ways and some ways are better than others. Some ways can help in multiple disciplines in multiple ways and they can also do it a lot faster. That's one of the reasons that we have actually moved away from you know, just doing behavioral tools or just doing strengths-based tools and actually moving into the neuroscience. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit more about today. Some studies from the Neuro Leadership Institute have found that the amount of rapid change that we have had to deal with. I mean, if you remember before 2020, we had a lot of rapid change that we were already dealing with as far as technology goes. But when you add in a crisis, right? An economic crisis, a health crisis, a global health crisis. Those are whole other levels of stress that people now have to perform within those constraints. Now, thankfully, you know, officially we're out of the pandemic stress. So I think that's going to help people's mentality and ability to deal with burnout a lot more. But typically, all of our organizations that we talk to today are dealing with stress around work from home or work from anywhere or hybrid workforces, basically the entire industry of workplace and commercial real estate and how we go about our day-to-day -day has changed. And that's where we are seeing a lot of these opportunities. So, you know, you know what the problem is. We know that it's stress. The problem is knowing when you've actually got the right kind of stress. And we'll talk a little bit about those and the effects of stress as we deal with this, because we got to know what causes the stress. And I want you to know that our solutions are focused on that growth mindset, because when we help companies develop to the top 10 percent, right, the top 10 percent performers, the A players, if we can help improve the thinking of the other performers in a job or a role, so that they're similar to those top performers, not only are they gonna do things better, but they're also gonna do it faster and with less stress. And when it comes to adopting all of these new technologies that we've had to adopt because of the changes in our environment, 
it helps people with moving through that change that much better. So we're sticking with this and utilizing our tools to help you build that growth mindset through recruiting, onboarding, and stress-reducing mindset tools and performance coaching that you'll see today. Just to look at my other book, Sell Like a Champ, you know, one of the primary differences between selling like a champ, selling like a contender, and selling like a chump is the ability to perform under stress. So a lot of what you see today, you may go, oh yeah, well that's like Myers-Briggs or that's like strengths or that's like behavioral stuff. It's not. It's completely different because this is talking about how you perform under stress and pressure. When it's time to perform, what shows up? Does it show up that you have a growth mindset or does it show up that you have a fixed mindset? And what is it if we can identify these things that are getting in the way of the performance and raising our anxiety, if we can specifically target that and remove that, we can remove that stress, improve performance, and ultimately beat burnout, which is why y'all are here today. So let's get started and learn a little bit more about how all of this came to be. So when you talk about stress, you can't talk about stress without talking about energy, because when we have high levels of energy, and we're engaged, you look right there in the middle, that big circle in the middle, we were talking about engagement in the studies from Gallup. A lot of people need to understand that this is a little bit like a throttle of a motorcycle or the energy continuum, right? We're trying to meet the middle level. We're trying to get the perfect little balance, the right speed for the duties that we have to complete. Right. Sometimes we have to slow down and we may need to lose, leave a little bit of patience on the table. And sometimes we need to speed up and utilize some of our abilities to get stuff done in a time crunch. So that's where this continuum starts to play. And as you start to expand and maybe spend too much time and you start to get tired, you're going to start to feel yourself become overwhelmed. The overwhelmed feeling is a precursor to that burnout. So when you finally get to burnout, it's like you can sleep for days and you still don't feel recovered. This is the area where you are not efficient. You're also not effective. And a lot of times when people are actually in burnout, they're trying really hard to focus, but they just can't focus. They suffer from what I call LOF, lack of focus. Lack of focus, lack of focus, lack of focus. We keep hearing that we only have the attention span of a goldfish these days. Now, I don't believe that. I believe that you can train focus like a muscle. And I believe that there's a lot of people that can focus longer than a goldfish. However, they have to care. They have to have the right attitude and they have to have the right effort. And if those two aren't part of the solution to get more engaged, then you will definitely feel less than your normal levels of effectiveness. The other side of this is that, you know, if you've ever been at a place where you're kind of in the wait and see, you know, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait and see. I'm going to put things on hold. So you're not really engaged. You're not at your highest level of effectiveness. You're kind of in a state of, you know, freeze. So this is also a bad place. You know, freeze leads to what I call rust out. And rust out is when you kind of get to the point where you're just like, whatever, they're going to do whatever they're going to do. And there's nothing I can do. It's completely out of my control. When you find yourself in that type of an environment, you really have to ask yourself why you are continuing to stay in that environment. Because if you're staying in the environment of rust out or burnout, your overall fulfillment and effectiveness in your career is not going to be as high as one would prefer. So it's actually a precursor, right? So if you can start to understand this energy continuum and levels of engagement, these are the ways that you can start to feel and understand and listen to yourself and help you overcome rust out and burnout. When we go into organizations, a lot of times people ask us, Evan, what exactly is it that you do? And Usually the answer is it depends, but what we do is we bring some models to the environment and we typically ask questions like this. On a scale of one to five, what's the degree of cynicism in the workplace? On a scale of one to five, what's the degree of inaction? What's the degree of overwork? What's the degree of frustration? And ultimately, 
what's the degree of opposition? So remember, you know, opposition is kind of like that wait and see. They're not really engaged, but they're also not really on board. Well, what this model shows us is that if somebody comes back and says, oh, you know, well, we're a five on cynicism. I know as a management consultant that this company needs to take a look at their values and they really need to define these values behaviorally. And then the leadership needs to actually embody those values. So if the leadership can embody those values, then we can reduce the amount of cynicism. So I think you get an idea of how we use this tool. Now, what I want to point out specifically in this is the frustration and overwork. These are the two areas from an organizational change standpoint that lead directly to burnout, right? The inaction is a little bit like the wait and see. So it's moving towards the rust out. Same thing with opposition. It's moving towards the rust out. But the overwork and frustration tell us that if these numbers, the perception is a three or higher, it tells us that the strategy is not right and the processes that they have in place are not correct. So strategy is a little bit harder to work with than, say, process. So if you're feeling overworked, this one is, you know, something that an employee doesn't have a whole lot of control over. So this is where we like to work with the individuals who may be, you know, suffering from this and coming up with some own some of their own personal health strategies to improve and deal with the overwork that they're experiencing. But if it's from a large organization, what it actually looks like is we're working hard, but we're not making progress that we hoped we would make. So that's what that looks like at an organizational level. The other side, frustration and processes, this one's a little bit easier for us to deal with. And what we do is we look at the processes that the people are having to utilize to get the work done. These processes need to have the right amount of salt is what I call it. You know, you can make a good breakfast and you can make your eggs and you can put too much salt on it and it'll ruin the eggs. You can also put, you know, salt on your eggs and not use enough and you don't get the robust flavor that you're looking for from the eggs. So again, how much salt do you need to make those eggs taste the way you want them so that you can reduce the frustration? It's the same thing with business process. If you have too many steps, if there's too much bureaucracy, there's too much pain in the rear and the software and the tools that you're using, that's where that organizational frustration is going to come from. So, you know, this is kind of a dual accountability piece, right? From a leadership perspective, you really have to look at, are you creating an environment that is reducing burnout? And then if you're in a in an environment that you can't really control or do much about, you're just a person who's working and you've got this to deal with, then you really can and have to just look at what you can do to manage your own personal frustrations by working on how you help yourself while you're in this environment. Because what you don't want to do is spend too much time. So you know, I love to talk to people about how to help themselves and how, how to help them identify these levels of burnout that can get in the way because stress leads to things like heart disease, strokes, high blood pressure, irritability, depression, migraines, hardening of the arteries, right? All the things that take us too soon these days. And with all of the problems that are overly complicated by, you know, COVID and vaccines and you know, the work from home, work from anywhere, you know, again, all of these environmental stresses that we deal with, you really have to start with yourself because that is the one thing that we can all control is our own behavior. And I love to talk to people about the power of full engagement. This is a tool that we use and we use in our coaching and it's all about managing energy, right? So again, how are you feeling? Are you engaged? Are you in wait and see or, or are you in overwhelm? When we go and we identify where somebody is on that stress continuum and the engagement continuum, we can start to help them understand what to do next. The answer to any time you are feeling burnout, overwhelm, wait and see, rust out, whatever it may be, the quickest way to get out of it is to go to the body. So if you can go for a walk, if you can start breaking up your schedule where you take some breaks and get away from the computer and stretch and bend and move, 
you'll start to build positive energy that will start to reduce the stress. When you can do that from a physical level, it also helps you start to regulate your emotions so that you can, you know, not be the yo-yo, not be too high, not too, too anxious, not too depressed, right? You can balance your emotions when your physical well-being starts to improve. When our emotions are under control, we can start to focus better. That's where the mental part and then the spiritual piece, I like to tell people, this is really kind of around your personal purpose or mission here and what's important to you. And it is important for you to work on all four of those. So these are pieces of the ways that we help people. But again, it's not just one thing. It's all four of those things combined together and finding ways to improve your rhythms and rituals so that you don't fall into burnout or overwhelm or rust out or on hold. So a lot of this starts with the mindsets. And what I teach people is that our perceptions matter. Because if I'm trying to get something done and I'm in an environment that may be negative, maybe holding me back, if my perceptions are positive, that means my attitudes will follow suit and be more positive. If my attitudes are positive, my focus will be where it should be. That means I'm utilizing my time more efficiently and I actually have good, positive, productive energy. Now, good, positive, productive energy also creates stress. However, this is the you stress. This is the good stress. This is like, you know, Christmas morning. It's 5.30 a.m. and your kids can't stay in the bed any longer because they just are so excited about Christmas morning. That's you stress. That you stress can be good because that you stress, if you channel it, to the body and your emotions and your focus and your purpose, it will lead you to a higher level of health, wealth, and well-being. However, if you flip your perceptions, let's say you're a glass half empty type of person, right? We kind of have this set point and then there's the things that we do, you know, according to Martin Seligman, he's he studied the science of happiness. And he said that, you know, if you do have this, some people's perceptions are primarily negative. And if your perceptions are primarily negative, you're going to have a harder time because your attitudes are going to be a little bit more negative. What that means is that your focus is not going to be as clear. It's going to be foggy. You're going to have that lack of focus and your time management is going to falter. The other bad thing is that your energy levels will start to lower. So this is the depression type feeling, right? where you're not having that productive, you're having protective type energy where you're just trying to want to go hide in bed. You don't want to get up for Christmas. You want to just stay in bed and try to get some rest because you're just so, so tired. Well, the idea is, is that you're overstressed. And unfortunately, stress leads to dis-ease in the body, which leads to disease and sickness. So, you know, it affects your health. So that's really the reason why you really need to keep your mindset in check and focus more on that growth mindset if you really want to bur beat burnout. Because if we can stay on the positive side, we can have that productive energy and try to mitigate the protective energy. So we want more use stress, less distress. The most common response to all this change, all these things that go on in our lives, right? Everything that's happened in the environment over the past few years is a perceived loss, right? Whether it's real or perceived, loss is loss and it causes negative perceptions for you. The most common behavioral effect is exactly on that energy and what it does, it puts it on hold. So what we don't want is for that energy to then get dispersed and you for you to go into a fight or flight response. We want to try and keep you in the productive zone as much as possible. So some other causes of change of, of stress, right? The perceived losses from change. We talk about, you know, when things change, you, you could feel a loss of affiliation. Uh, stress causes you to feel less responsible, structure, control, purpose, influence, entitlement. You know, all of these things lead to the disses of change, right? We say that you start to become disoriented, you start to disengage, you start to become disidentified, and then you finally become disenchanted. All of these disses can be seen behaviorally, right? These are observable behaviors, but 
what you can't see is what's really going on underneath in the body. And again, this is where the danger zone is, and this is what you want to try and protect against. So when we coach folks, what we're looking for a lot of times when we first start out engagements is we're looking for bare minimum energy. And what I like to say is I like to see attitude and effort because that's what my coaches said to me when I was a kid. If you can bring good attitude and effort to the table, you're going to start building towards that discretionary positive energy of high productivity. Discretionary energy is that energy that you have where you say, you know what? I have some time on the weekend. I'm going to go ahead and knock that out. And you knock out that project that you've been working on, but it doesn't send you into overwhelm and it does not send you into burnout. So you know you're doing good if you can handle the bare minimum and then tamper that bare minimum with you know a little bit of discretionary energy. If you're a person who's leaning on the rust outside or more towards the wait and see, you're not, you don't even meet the bare minimum. So again, depending on where you are in that continuum, what you want to do is try and find that balance from a physical, emotional, intellectual, spiritual well-being piece. If you can get to the bare minimum and develop the rituals and the habits and the beliefs, then you can start to develop this discretionary energy. The other cool thing about discretionary energy is that's the energy that's going to keep you from falling into burnout and rust out. So how does this work? I explained to you the big seven of change, our perceptions. If they're positive, they create more positive self-talk. And then our behaviors will change and be more positive. That, in effect, helps other people build energy around you. And then you can start to feed off their energy. And then their self-talk self -talk starts to improve. And then their perceptions start to improve. So that's kind of how the leadership and the influence piece works and the why behind why you would want to not only sell like a champ, but to also think like a champ. And it really starts with knowing where to focus. Once you know where to focus, you can take some time to pause and kind of understand what is the type of self-talk that's going on. If you talk to yourself in a way that is negative, the easiest way for you to know is to ask yourself if somebody was your friend and they said to you what you say to yourself sometimes, would they still be your friend? Sometimes we talk to ourselves and we say things to ourselves that we would never say to anybody else because they're just so darn mean. And that does have a big effect. And so a lot of our coaching has to do with being able to focus on those perceptions, being able to identify where that self-talk might be turning from champ talk to chump talk and where we might be hurting ourselves, lowering our energy, lowering our engagement and disconnecting from ourselves. So we want to find what is that goal? What is that target in our own level of success or definition of success? Or where are we in our journey for self-actualization? You know, do we have our basic needs met? You know, are we covering basic deficiency needs and are we able to find those growth needs so that we connect and grow to the next highest level? So mindset, the cool thing about mindset is that it's changing. Here's an example of what can happen in when you can't focus, right? When you suffer from LOF. I'm going to take a couple of seconds here and I'm going to let you look at this chart. And I want you to feel it while we while we go through this webinar. So the idea here is I want you to look at the chart and say the color, not the word. So go ahead and go. The instructions are look at the chart and say the color, say the color, not the word. Go. Okay. Due to time, I'm going to go ahead and stop you there. Here's the self-test. If you got to the first word and you failed, you got some stress going on. If you got to, you're like, okay, I got this. Okay, I failed. And then you got to the second one. You're like, okay, now I got it figured out. And then you get to the third one and you're like, I got it. Then you probably started to have to pause. Your brain probably had to start slowing down a little bit so that you could focus because this is a right and left brain conflict. This is what goes on day in and day out when we multitask. 
This is what goes on day in and day out when we're super, super busy. And what's going on is your right brain is trying to say the color, but your left brain insists on reading the word. And when we have this conflict going on, again, things that are out of our control, like, say, COVID or, you know, some change that's happening within the workplace that you have no control over. This is a layer of stress that goes on. Now, I've got three kids and one granddaughter, and I can tell you that all they have to do is come home with a problem. And that's another layer of stress that I experience. So, again, you know, we have to learn how to manage this stress so that we can stay engaged. And I hope you got an idea of what that is. The quickest way to get people to see that it's okay to feel stress and it's okay to feel bad about yourself or okay to feel disappointed in something, the important thing is you have to recover. You have to get out of that negative spot, whatever that negative thinking is. And I love to use this quote by Michael Jordan because at the end of the day, champions play to win. And, you know, the losers, they focus on these negatives, right? The negative perceptions, and they visualize the penalties of failure. Those are the things that keep them from moving forward, where winners visualize the rewards of success, and they also are willing to use discipline to earn the focus needed and reduce the other stresses to have success. So I love this quote, again, by Michael Jordan. He shows how he's able to move through it. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. What a loser, right? Not. We all know this guy is a champion in basketball, and look what he has to say. I've failed over and over and over again in my life, and that's why I succeed. That's how you win. You have to have a certain level of resilience, and you have to have that mindset where you can identify where those blockers are, where those barriers are for you that keep holding you back or keeping you from being successful in the goals that are important to you. At the end of the day, I like to joke around sometimes and tell people, you know, if you've done everything you can do and you haven't had any success, you really have four choices. First one is you can work on solving it. The second one is you can suck it up. The third one, you can just move on. And if you've tried all three of those, you really only have one choice. You can call Springboard Consulting. <laughs> because at the end of the day, if you try to do this on your own, you're probably going to fail. If your organization just tries to figure it out on their own and they don't really have a good strategy, something based around building a growth mindset in the organization, you're probably going to fail. And the reason I say that is we're under more stress than ever. We have more things causing that left brain, right brain conflict in our environments, in our workforces than ever before. So what we do differently with neuroscience is we offer targeted neuro performance coaching. This coaching is like no other coaching out there. It's clinically validated and it's been utilized in businesses over 20 years. So it's based on brain mapping, which helps us identify that self-talk that left brain, right brain stuff that maybe things you don't know you don't know are causing you to fall into continued burnout or continued rust out. So what we've done is taken this program and bottled it so that we can help you increase your own leadership and influence and performance in just a matter of weeks by being able to switch your self-talk from chump talk to champ talk. Here's a little example of what I'm talking about. Here you got Tyrion Lannister. I love this quote. He's obviously had a challenged life, but he's also a very successful gentleman. His mother once told him, nothing can destroy iron. Only iron is its own rust can. Likewise, nothing can destroy you, only your own mindset. This is an example of our neuro performance assessment. And just so that I didn't compromise any confidentialities, I went ahead and used my own. So you're getting a look at my assessment when I took it. And when I took it, I looked down there, I was like, anxiety, 83 over 100. No way. I'm good. All I got to do is go to the gym. I got all these other tools that I do and I'm good. Well, guess what? I was, I mean, I went to school and got a degree in psychology. I studied sports psychology and I'm a certified executive coach. I'm a certified health and well-being coach. I've been the 
ACSM certified, wellness coach certified, and I still didn't know what I didn't know. Here's what the assessment showed me. That thinking speed down there, 28 out of 32, means I can process information pretty darn fast. What that also means is that I can be pretty darn impatient. So I need to be aware of that as a leader, and that's something that I need to be aware of so that I can help reduce my anxiety. Now, the other thing that it showed me that I didn't know I didn't know is that uh, there are these things that we do that bring us into a more positive mindset. We call these success drivers. The success drivers you can see are there in blue. There are things like ambition, which is my ability to make decisions and how high I want to go with my life. My confidence level, there you go, I was 100 out of 100. A very confident person, had great parents, had a great nurturing environment, had a lot of success in my life. Now, the bad thing is, is that there are also times where I can use what we call stress drivers or the drivers that get in the way, the brakes, the things that cause that anxiety level to get higher. Now, if you asked me at this time when I took this assessment, if I was stressed, I would tell you no, I just needed to go burn off some steam at the gym three to four times a week. And as long as I did that, I was fine. Now, at the same time, I did have some frustrations with my kids, and I can say that they didn't always get the most understanding dad. And what they got was a controlling and a skepticism-based dad. So I could use the ambition and confidence, my great interpersonal skills, my systematic thinking, and my relational skills, which is empathy and trust, I could utilize those at work, but then I would get tired. I would get overwhelmed. I would get put on wait and see. And as soon as that started to happen, I started utilizing my stress drivers. These are based out of fear, and I would flip over to becoming more controlling and more skeptical. When that happens, I started experiencing left brain, right brain conflict in my thinking, which started to control my self-talk, which started to control my behaviors. So this is where that anxiety level came up. And again, it's kind of like the frog in the boiling water, right? If you're used to living in that water and it's about ready to cook you, you don't even know it until you're dead because the stress has caught up to you. So this was so powerful to me. We added it to our coaching repertoire, and it really is the key to what we are doing moving forward. Because if we can start building people into these success drivers, utilizing neuroscience and helping them change their self-talk, we can help people move from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. In my book, Sell Like a Champ, this is exactly what we do when we address mindset versus just skill sets and tool sets for salespeople. Because salespeople are under a lot of stress, as are the leaders. And we figured this was probably the best place to start helping people reduce those anxieties and improve their performance thinking. So why do I keep saying growth versus fixed mindset? Well, this is a, this is a uh, philosophy and proven tool developed by Stanford University. When they, when they basically placed a challenge or a failure in front of someone, People with a growth mindset would actually move towards the challenge or the problem, and they would increase their effort. They would become more engaged, and they would actually achieve higher achievement. That higher achievement then, just like our perception, self-talk, and behavior, actually helped reinforce more self-efficacy, more confidence, so that we could continue to grow that growth mindset. However, those that were with a fixed mindset who faced challenge or failure started to reduce their effort and they started to lower their achievement. And the more they experienced failure, the more they reinforced their fixed mindset. This is the problem. This is another example of that perception, right? Do you want to have protective energy or do you want to have productive energy? You have to be in a high level of engagement. So some of the tools that we use, what we're able to do now is we're able to identify utilizing some of the Neuro Leadership Institute uh, data to be able to show with our tools, when you take our assessment, we can show you what 
barriers you may have that may be causing you to have more of a fixed mindset, a low growth mindset, a high growth mindset, or even up to the top 5%. And what we do is we look for those top 5% and we build these templates around those top 5% mindsets so that we can actually help organizations continue to grow. Because if you're bringing high, you're hiring in new people who have a fixed mindset, it's going to lead to poor performance, lack of engagement, and increased turnover. That's going to impact your bottom line. And then those people that may be in the middle, you know, it's not as bad as being fixed, but again, it's more of the status quo and you'll experience lack of growth. So from a philosophical standpoint, organizational development and leadership, we want to help our clients increase performance and engagement and reduce that turnover, which would le learn lead to more growth. So this is kind of how it works. The Neuro Performance Profile measures 12 performance thinking drivers. The success drivers show self-motivation. Again, their ambition, confidence, relational, interpersonal, and systematic. The other drivers that it tests and measures quantitatively and qualitative, right? Most behavioral tools are qualitative. You're looking at numbers here that are quantity based, right? I can say honestly that I'm 100 out of 100 when it comes to confidence. That's a good thing. However, it's not good to be 100 out of 100 confident and 94 out of 100 on controlling. Those two things are going to cause that left brain, right brain conflict. So that's the importance of having both your self-motivation drivers identified and the fear and stress motivation drivers identified. The other measure that we show is the speed of thought. I talked a little bit about that. Usually, you know, if you're a person that's high end type A, you're probably going to be over the middle. So you're going to be higher than a 16 out of the 32 when it comes to your speed of thought. Uh, that's actually a good thing because it actually helps you uh, manage your stress better. When we have your assessment, we're able to uh, build into a program for an organization where we can take an individual's assessment. If we have two or three people in a particular job role, we can actually develop a high performance template. And then when we test the entire group or team, we can develop specific targeted coaching to help move those thinking barriers down which in turn raises your success drivers. And when we do that, it also lowers the stress. This is why we are saying put an end to burnout. We now have quantitative measures using neuroscience to identify exactly where the burnout and rust out comes from. And then not only that, but we have mindset shifts that create the self-talk specific to each stress driver so that we can turn them into the success drivers that you need to perform at your highest levels for as long as possible. Typically, if you, let's say you did the assessment and you had, you know, six of the stress drivers were just off the chain, you would be looking at about an eight week program to resolve that. However, if you saw my profile, I actually had two drivers that were high on the stress side that I needed to work on. And I went through a four week program. So depending upon what you need done, that's the prescription for your coaching. This is a little bit of an example. You know, our typical coaching results are a 33% improvement. And what we do is we do your assessment at the beginning. We run you through the coaching, the targeted performance coaching, and then we do an assessment at the end so that you can see based on your own data, how you've been able to move your stress drivers down and improve your success drivers. So that's an example of there. Again, the normal typical results are about 33% per person. In some cases, uh, there's only one or two drivers. So the percentage of change may not be that much, but it can also be that much more impactful as well. So utilizing these tools to kill and beat burnout, you can also start hiring to a higher level right? Bringing in people that are going to bring in more energy and more engagement into your organization. And then also looking at your current employees and making sure that you can put a plan in place to remove their barriers to success and remove their burnout and rust out and help them develop that growth mindset that can grow your business. So utilizing these tools, we can you know narrow down a wide talent pool or we can 
uh, make decisions in a narrow pool. Again, making sure that you're hiring to that top 10% and finding folks that aren't at that high level of anxiety. And even if they are, we can remove it. Again, this is something based in neuroscience. So it's a deeper level of talent intelligence. And it can also work alongside other behavioral assessments and leadership tools. It's designed to give you this predictable performance in specific job requirements. And it gives you 95% accuracy in predicting future job performance. So you know, we're all about ensuring that you have an objective performance evaluation. Diversity, inclusion, and hiring is also there. However, it's not explicit. So again, this meets all EEOC compliant regulations. And when we work with our folks to put it up the front at the hiring piece, again, that's when we're focused on building that high performance culture. So if y'all are interested in getting started with this, you can go ahead and scan that. This assessment is usually $79 on its own, and we're offering it for $39 today through that scan there. And I believe as we do our follow-ups, we'll also be sending not only the link uh, for the uh, presentation, but also a link for you to purchase and get that $39 special. So if you're looking to end burnout, you can get started today. If you want to take a little test drive, get started today, get your assessment, learn a little bit more about it, and you think it's something you want to bring to your organization, we can certainly do that and help you develop and hire to the top 10% level within your organization. This is all based off of 25 years of real-world proven neuroscientific tools. Remember I said it's clinically validated and evidence-based. They equip you with the ability to map this performance thinking to any job requirement. And when we do this, we can reduce turnover and increase engagement. We can help you build a growth mindset culture by hiring and developing to that accurate benchmark. And when we do this, we get measurable results, quantitative results around what is typically known as soft skills that we can tie to bottom line results and ROI within just a matter of weeks. So. Do us a favor, you can check us out at springboard.consulting or springboardyourbiz.com for more information. But the only way to get this $39 special is to go ahead and scan and buy your assessment today. You'll have the wonderful Kelly Wones follow up with you and get everything set up so that you can end burnout for good. Thank you all so much for attending. So I'm going to hang out for about another five to seven minutes and I'm going to turn mute off. And if there's anybody out there that wants to say hello, please do. Any questions, any comments? Yeah. Hey, this is Thomas. Um, thanks, Evan. That was really, uh, quick and a lot of information in a short time and i really appreciate you uh you know not over laboring it but also giving some really good information and did you say that when we get follow-ups we'll have the 39 dollars rate at that time that is correct we're going to okay. include the link in there for you to purchase it at the 39 dollars piece and you know, if you if you have other folks that you want to add in, that's fine, too. It's really just about giving everybody a little bit of a break to try it out because yeah. it is so powerful uh, in helping people identify. Like I said, me, I had no idea I was 83 out of 100. I've had some people take it and they're 100 out of 100. And I usually start off with, are you do, does that seem right to you? And they go, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Uh, when we when we do the assessment, we're usually looking for something under 60, but really right. it's that anxiety score that tells us and helps us tell you whether or not you're close to burnout or having an engagement problem or, you know, there's so many different things from a talent management that we can do to help the individual in managing that stress and improving performance. Excellent. Thank you for the great comments and, and I appreciate the compliments. All right. Anyone else? Thank you, Evan. This is Sukanya here. Um, that was a very elegant and uh, to the point presentation. Wonderfully done. 
and it's uh, very impressive uh, the tool and really um, have a look at it um wanted to understand i'm logging in from india so it's quite late in the night for me so when you send the link is it going to stay for about 12 hours so that i can you know uh, uh, sort of uh, avail this uh, in the next 12 hours or so we've got some automated follow ups and we're going to put that link so you know i did the little qr codes to make it easy if you wanted to try it now with your phone but when you get the follow up emails after the webinar we're going to have the payment link in there and that link is very special for that $39 cuz like i said typically it's 79 so yes you will get that no i'm saying that uh, that link will stay active for the next 12 hours is what i'm saying because uh, then in that case I, it'll be easier for me to uh, it'll probably sign up be for active it. yeah it'll probably be active for about 4 or 5 days actually oh cool fine perfect yeah, yeah, you'll have plenty of time. Excellent. And hopefully you have and our information and now I know you. I know your name, I'll remember and I'll help I'll I'll get you the deal for sure. Excellent. Thank you and thanks it's it was a brilliant presentation. Thank you so much. Like I said the goal is to try to, you know, make these kind of rapid fire. We know everybody's busy, but I want to give people information to really help them and I appreciate the compliments. Thank you so much. Hi everyone. This is Suresh. Hi, Suresh. You sound familiar. Yes. Actually, you helped me a couple of years ago. Aha. Good, good, good to hear from you again. Good to hear from yes, you. Yes, yeah. Good to talk to you. Actually, in fact, you know, as always, you your presentation is like five star. Thank you ah. so much for the help. I mean, there are so many businesses, they need help, like, or I can say um, the information or help or consulting, like what you provide. Um, uh, I think it's going to make a huge difference for for uh, those businesses. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Hey, you got it. We got to reconnect soon. I'd love to hear about where you are at and what's going on and, you know, maybe go grab a coffee here in Dallas someday. Yes, we'll do that. Sure. Awesome. Thanks for showing up. Good to hear from you, my friend. All right. Thank you so much, Ivan. All right, with that, I think we're going to call it a, a wrap. Thank you so much to my team, Erica Warfield, Sharon Kinderman, Kelly Wones, Peter Hammer, Paul Louisville, all the people that have worked to help uh, pull this off today and continue to work tireless tirelessly. Uh, we like to focus on building a growth mindset in our organization, and we also like to, you know, work hard on ending burnout in our culture on our team and I have a lot of really hard chargers and you know it's something that we work together to hold each other uh, in the highest levels of performance and the highest levels of well-being so I look forward to helping you or answering any questions you may have in the future thank you so much for attending today and make it a great day bye-bye